Hello, Unity developers, and welcome to the second video on making a multiplayer survival game in Unity. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Socket Weaver real-time agent. In multiplayer games, we want to keep the states of the game objects synchronized, and the Socket Weaver real-time agent is designed to synchronize states that are constantly changing. For example, the player's transform states and the player's animation states. The real-time agent continuously creates packets which contains the states of its game object, and the real-time agent sends the packet to the Socket Weaver game server, and the game server combines the packets and broadcasts it to other players in the same room. In other players' game, the real-time agent on the remote duplicates will decompress the packets and apply the states to the duplicated game object. So we are going to take the concept that we just learned and apply it to our game. So this is where the first video left off. I'm going to select the player game object, and I'm going to add a real-time agent to the player game object. Notice that a network ID component is also attached to the player game object. The network ID component helps the Socket Weaver SDK to identify a game object. I'm going to set the network ID to player. By doing this, the owner of the game object will be the player who creates it. And let's take a look at the transform section of the real-time agent. I'm going to enable transform, and I want the player's position values to be synchronized. We can move the player around in the game to find out the minimum and the maximum boundary of the game. And this will help the real-time agent to compress the values. And I'm going to enter the minimum and the maximum boundary to the real-time agent. And I'm going to select X, Y, and Z for the position values. And next, I'm going to enable Y for the rotation updates. We can change the resolution to integer because one degree difference in rotation is almost invisible. And I'm going to set the snap distance to 10. And next, I'm going to enable animation. And I'm going to drag the animator component to the animator target. and we want all the animator parameters to be synchronized. And don't forget to apply your changes to the prefab. And next, I'm going to change the code to make the player controllable to its owner. And first, I'm going to use the SW network namespace. And we're going to get a reference to the network ID component. In the start method, we're going to get the network ID of the game object. And we're going to set the camera to look at the local player. And in the update method, if the player is not the owner of the game object, we're just going to return. And next, I'm going to update the player aim script. And this script controls the rotation of the game object. And similar to the player movement, we need to get a reference to the network ID component. And in the update method, if the player is not the owner of the game object, we're just going to return. And I'm just going to disable the FPS cursor, and this will help us to switch between different game clients. That's all we need to do to synchronize the player's transform and animation states. Remember, we have to use the Saki Weaver Sync Spawner to instantiate game objects. I'm going to add a new empty game object, and I will name it Sync Spawner, and I will attach a Sync Spawner component to it. And we can drag our player prefab into the Sync Spawner. And next, I'm going to make two spawn points, so the Sync Spawner knows where to instantiate our player game objects. I'm just going to place the spawn point at the center of the game, and we can drag and drop the spawn points to the Sync Spawner. The Sync Spawner invokes the onReady event when it finishes fetching the spawn history from the game server and we are going to implement a listener message to spawn players in the game. I'm going to add a public void on spawner ready message. 
the finished setup parameter indicates whether the player has already connected to the game before. The game will have two players, and one of them will be the host player. We can use the isHost property to differentiate the players and assign different spawn points to them. After that, make sure to select the listener method that we just implemented in the Sync Spawner component. And we can disable the robot spawners for now. We are ready to build the project. So I think it's working. I'm just going to move around to test if the player moves smoothly. Awesome. It feels really good to see the player's movements are synchronized. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the synced properties. Sync the properties are used to synchronize states that are updated infrequently, for example the player's weapon. So thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.